on, I'm asking you now to share with others, invite others to join in as we go into the word on today. Now on last week, we started um, a, a message entitled, Recognize, Recognize, amen. And we're gonna continue in that on today. So uh, if you have your, your blessing catcher, which is something to write with and something to write on, we will now have prayer and go into the word. Before I do that, though, God bless all of you. Amen. Those of you here and those of you in our streaming audience, God bless you. God love you. So do I. Amen. You're in our hearts here in Rochester, New York, Ark of Jesus Ministries. And you can join us here, 1000 North Winton Road. For those of you who are wondering where we are, we're at 1000 North Winton Road. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, thank you so very much for being the awesome, loving, merciful, life-changing God who's been watching out for us right from the beginning and even now. And Lord God, as it come to our awareness that there are various ones who are sick and challenged in their health, I pray now for healing and deliverance. I pray, Father, for uh, home situations that are challenged right now. Pray for your intervention in those matters. And God, the healing touch and the peace that only you can bring. I pray now that as you move by your spirit, as you touch and as you intervene in the affairs of man's life, I pray, God, that you would receive honor and glory, praise and thanks, and that somebody will see today that you are a prayer answering God, that you do love them, above their ability to understand the depth of your love toward them. And I pray that lives are transformed in Jesus' name for your glory and for your praise, dear God. And all in agreement with this prayer said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you. Amen. We care about you. I want you to know we genuinely care. And so you feel free to reach out to us. You can call us at 585 Two six two six four two zero. Amen. Again, that's five eight five two six two six four two zero. How many ready to go into the Word today? Amen. Amen. Y'all said that real soft, real quiet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Um, if you would, I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles and go with me into the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, and we're going to read two verses there. I'll be reading from the King James Version. That's St. John, chapter number 8, verse 31 and verse 32. That's our foundation text for uh, our lesson today. Amen, amen, and amen. I believe it is so important that we recognize so many things. And it's amazing how much we allow to get past us that if we were paying more attention or if we knew we should have paid attention, we would have caught some stuff. And so we want to uh, look at some of that on today. And when we do, how it enriches and impacts our lives and not just our lives, but the lives of others as well is so significant. Are you there in St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 31? For those of you that's in this sanctuary, would you rest upon your feet with me now? At home, I'm going to ask you to just stand as well. Glory to God. We're all in this thing together because this is real church, right? <coughs> Amen. So I'm going to ask you to stand with us on today as we go forth in this session. What I'm going to do first is, again, I will pray. After the prayer, we'll make a faith confession together. After the faith confession, I will read the word of the Lord in your hearing. You can feel free thereafter to have your seat in his presence at home and in this sanctuary. Let's pray. Father, again, we come. You told us that we're to always pray and not to faint. And so now, now God, I ask that you will take the lead. I decrease that you might increase, Lord Jesus. I give way to the perfect ministry of the Holy Spirit who is able to make the complex simple. I yield my mouth, my body as a vessel, a conduit as well, that Lord God, men might hear your voice at my word. I ask you now, Lord God, that you would 
that, that you will touch lives in meaningful ways today, that lives will be transformed, your name glorified in all. In Jesus' name, and I believe you now, Father, that none of the harvest is lost. In Jesus' mighty name, those in agreement with this prayer said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let's do our faith confession. If you have your Bible, just lift them up right at home. Just lift it up with me. Amen. Come on, come on. Lift it up. Lift it up. Let's say this together. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. It is life, it is life to, me. to me. And because of God's faithfulness. And because of God's faithfulness. To his word. To his word. And my obedience. And my obedience to him in faith. To him in faith. I now walk in love. I now walk in love. And the blessing of abundant life. Of abundant life. Amen. While you're still standing, I'm going to read in your hearing John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Using for thought today, recognize. Look at your neighbor and just say, recognize. Recognize. Come on, look somebody else. Just say, recognize. Recognize. Oh, my God. Those of you at home, you may not have anybody on the side of you or you just may, but if there's no one there but you, just use your hand like a mirror and just say, recognize. Recognize. Amen. Amen. You all can feel free to have your seat in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. To recognize is so desperately important. Um, you know, there are some folk who have had to live in the wild. And there are certain things that you can eat in the wild that will help sustain your life. Um, in the deserts, there are cactuses that one can get water from in a desert place. Uh, uh, in the wilderness areas, there are certain types of life forms that one can eat to be sustained. And at the very same time, there are dangerous things that should not be eaten and sometimes even touched because it can kill you. And if one doesn't know, then easily they could touch and or consume something that could harm them and or kill them. So it's so important to recognize things. So important. As we look at this passage of scripture, Jesus is talking and he says, he says, now, if you continue in my word, so if one want to know whether or not they are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, all they have to do is recognize whether or not they're continuing in the word of God. Hello, somebody. Amen. That's our litmus test. That, that's the test of whether or not we're really walking with the Lord. If we're doing our own thing apart from what he has said, then there's a big question mark there. Hello. To settle the question, the Bible says, just going from the word, the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And this is Jesus talking. Now, I can't help but think that he knows what qualifies as his disciple. And he knows who qualifies as his disciple. We live in a day and a time. When folk feel like they can give anything to the Lord, anything to God, and God will say, oh, thank you. Come on. Yeah, yeah, let me embrace you. Hold on. That's not what the scripture says. That's not what scripture teaches. And you and I are called to live righteous and holy lives. That was a good place for an amen. Some of y'all, you, you missed it, but that's all right. It was a good place for an amen. Maybe you catch the next one. We are to live holy and righteous lives. And... To, to live that out, we live it by the direction of God's word. Amen. And it applies to everybody, young, old, black, white, rich, poor. It doesn't matter. In this country or another country, living in urban or suburban areas, the rural area, it has nothing to do with it. The criteria is for all mankind. Amen. It is so. And then he says, 
he says this, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, God says, listen, as you hear my word, you're going to know what's right. Some things we just know to do right, but then we're stuck in the flesh. Ah, uh, yeah, another good amen. place for an amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. I know it's early yet. I know it's early. Amen. But that's all right. Yeah, we're going to get together here. Um, he said, you're going to know it. And, and, and I thank God for uh, uh, how God constructed and orchestrated things that, that even though some things we don't know just intellectually per se, there comes a witness down on the inside that I need to go after God. I need to shape up some things in my life. I need to let some stuff loose. I need to depart from some stuff. And there are some things I need to embrace. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. This is the counsel of Scripture. Scripture says, you shall know the truth. In other words, it's a personal know. I know for myself, this is the life I'm supposed to lead. Now, however somebody else lives, that's their stuff. I know I'm supposed to be walking in the counsel of God's word. I know. Amen. So I don't have to uh, use or try to embrace somebody else as my barometer of whether or not I ought to be walking in this word. Why? Because I have a witness on the inside. And I'm thankful to God that even an individual in sin, God speaks to and says, hey, it's time for a change. It's time to come in. It's time to get it together. It's time to do something different. Come on here. Amen. God has been so good to every last one of us. Amen. Well, my amens are coming slow this morning, but that's all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm still good. I'm still good. I'm all right. Um, he's been good to every last one of us, and we owe him everything. It is so. We owe him every single thing. So the scripture says you're going to know it. And when you know it, that truth is going to be what sets you free. Amen. So when we, when we use this, this word today, recognize, I believe that we do well to recognize that it's time for some changes. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. It's time to do some things different. It's time to get some stuff together. It's time to align with the word of God. It's time to give him glory and praise. It's time to seek his face with our whole heart and not just a part. Amen. It is so. It is so. Have him turn the air conditioning. Yes. Glory to God. I see folks saying, it's getting hot in here, y'all. I know y'all can't feel it at home, but it's getting hot in here. I don't know if I'm preaching that good or something else. My God. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. But, but, but we need to recognize. We need to recognize. You see, we only have so many days, so many hours, and so many opportunities. And it's the will of God that we move in agreement with him, move in agreement with his timing, move in agreement with his plan, that we might have his best in our lives. Amen. It is so. He wants us to have his best. But for you and I to have his best, then we have to follow the dictates, the guidance, the nudging, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit assignment is to lead us into all truth. And I believe, listen, I know some of you watching today and listening, you may have a different thought on this, and I'm all right with that because I'm okay in the skin I'm in. Listen, I believe the Spirit of God deals with every individual, wicked or righteous. So folks who have never known Jesus, the Holy Spirit still works with them and gives them direction whether or not they follow. Amen. You see, because following directions is a choice. It's not a mandate. You can choose to follow or not. Now you could be instructed in terms of a mandate or a command, but the action is really a choice. It is so. So the Holy Spirit is going to be faithful to his assignment. His assignment is to lead us into all truth. And this is why you and I are like those of you in the viewing audience, those of you in the sanctuary can witness that there's times when the Holy Spirit have directed us and we didn't do it. And later we got to see, oh, I should have. Amen. Hello. There's other times when we did obey. 
Saturday, and we're glad that we did. Now, we may not have understood it was the Holy Spirit's leading. We may not have known that God was speaking to us in those moments. What many of, of us will say is we say, something told me. Hello. We will say, uh, you know, it came to my mind. I thought about it. I felt like I knew I should have. Come on in. These are descriptive uh, ways we uh, uh, identify that being led to do the right thing, even if we miss it and do the wrong thing. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So today, you and I do well to recognize the voice of the Lord. Woo, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How do you or I recognize the voice of the Lord. I know some folks say, well, God don't talk to me. I heard folks say God talked to them, but he doesn't talk to me. How do you know God talks to you? Well, for one, you have to pay attention. Amen. 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 Yeah, you have to pay attention. If you're not paying attention, you won't recognize he's talking to you. How many of you have been talking to somebody? Maybe they're watching television or something. You're talking to them. They're glued to the tube. They don't even recognize you're in the room. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Hey, hey. What, what? I was talking to you. What? Hey, you know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're in two different places, and you are. What? Because they're not paying attention. And you and I today, if we're going to recognize the voice of the Lord, then we have to pay attention to it. Amen. 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 It is so. My God, my God, my God. Listen, as we pay attention, we get to hear what some call the whispers, Amen. the little calm voices. You know, the word tells us about the prophet Elijah, great, great prophet in the scriptures. And uh, God had used the prophet Elijah in a great way, mighty way. And uh, one of the occasions was when uh, he had was used to slay the um, uh, uh, prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Baal. Well, he was God's representative in that season. And the king's wife, king being Ahab, his wife being Jezebel, Jezebel sends a message to say, tomorrow you're going to be like one of them of my, my prophets that were slain. The Bible lets us know that Elijah runs and hides in a cave. Now here he is, he done stood out before these 400 men and more. 400 of them were prophets, he slew all them. But there were more than them They He stood out in front of all of them, big, bold, bad, believing God, seeing God do what only God could do. After that, a woman put her voice forth and he ran and hid. That's fine. While he's hiding in a cave, there's a whirlwind, if you will. There's different manifestations that seem like it should have been God, but it wasn't. God was in the still, small voice. Sometimes folk are waiting and expecting God to thunder across the heavens of their mind and, and, and cause an earthquake under the feet of their meditations. But that's not commonly how it is. Many times he'll speak to you in just a still, small voice. And if you are too busy, you won't hear it. If you are too preoccupied, you won't recognize that he's talking to you. Hello, somebody. Yeah. You see, you get to recognize a person's voice by hearing it more often and being able to, to make that connection. So if a person's talking to you, whether it's on the phone, you never see their face, but they talk to you and they share their name. In a, a, some can catch it quicker than others, but for some folks, you have to hear that voice time and time again. Then after a while, you pick that voice up. There's a certain nuance to how they say what they say. There's a certain tone that they say it in. There's a certain speed that they share it in, and you pick it up right away. It's like the little baby commonly knows the mother's voice because it spends so much time with the mother. And that's a little baby. Well, if that's ability that a little baby has, 
then it's also an ability that you and I have because you and I were those little babies. Yes. What happens sometimes is we get to listening to all the other voices and lose the sensitivity to the voice of God. Amen. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. So, so, so recognizing is so important. In fact, I trust that you're recognizing that in this pandemic, this, this global pandemic, this COVID-19, this time of lockdown, this time of social distancing, this time of face wearing and sanitizing, just bathing in sanitizer, all that disinfecting everything. I hope you recognize that this is also a time of opportunity. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. You see, before any change of, of, of value comes, there is something that introduces it. If uh, right now we have accommodating weather in our area, I promise you, as the weather gets ready to change, things are going to change in the atmosphere. Yes. Many times another wind blows in, and following that wind come different temperatures. Following that wind may come stronger winds. Following some of those winds may come rain or snow or you name it, but it follows something that precedes it. And this COVID uh, pandemic that we're facing right now is an a indication that this is a new season we're moving into. My God. You might well say amen. Listen, if you think we're going back to how it was on yesteryear, you can rethink it because it'll be some time before we get back there. Amen. Get up. Amen. 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 It is so. So some who are, as it were, pushing back on it, hey, this pandemic, I'll be glad when it's over and COVID, and I understand that. I, God knows I understand it. At the very same time, I believe one of the things we ought to be doing is seeking the Lord for God. What do you want me to see in this season? Amen. Help me to recognize the season I'm in, the time I'm in, the opportunities you are affording me right now. Amen. Jesus. Somebody said, don't curse the darkness, light a candle. Yeah, cursing the darkness, it's still going to be dark. Amen. The Bible speaks to us uh, uh, there in the book of John and tells us that it's the light that dispels the darkness. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. There's nothing else that dispels darkness but light. You can get your favorite shoes. The darkness will stay there. You can cook your favorite dish. The darkness will stay there. You can get out all the tools in your toolbox. The darkness will stay there. You can drive fast as you want to. The darkness will stay there. The only thing that dispels darkness is light. Jesus. Amen. Truth is light. Uh -huh. Jesus. Amen. So the scripture says, you shall know what? The truth. You shall know the light. My God. Hallelujah. The, the truth, the Bible says, make you free. The light releases you from the bondage of darkness. Amen. It is so. Look at your neighbor and say, recognize. Amen. Recognize. You know, uh, um, let, let's go over to Joshua real quick. Let's go to Joshua real quick. I want to touch on a few, few scriptures and, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 10. Jesus. When, when uh, the Israelites were in Egyptian bondage and God directed Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, and he did it. And, and I just want to put a pin right there. You know, there's times when God will speak to you and tell you something. And what we commonly do is think that right after he says it, things are going to change right away. And they may not change right away the way we thought. And so if we are careful, we'll second guess, God, was that you or was that me? Sometime we'll ignore it the next time. But if you look at what happened with Moses, Moses was instructed to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh certain things. Pharaoh, I mean, Moses was a bit scared of Pharaoh because you didn't play with the kings, okay? Amen. 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 They, they had to put 
You know, they had to sick the dog on you. The dog's ready to get you anyway. And, and uh, he asked the question, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? But God gave him instruction, you go ahead, I'll be with you, all that kind of stuff. You tell him, let my people go, what have you. And then he even lets him know, I'm going to harden your heart. But in time, as it were, he will let my people go. How many of you today, and I trust that you recognize God in your life and you refuse to be denied. Uh, 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 Moses, even though Pharaoh didn't let the people go initially, though he said he would on multiple occasions, Moses didn't stop obeying God. I want to encourage you today. There may be a word God spoke to you. He may have promised you something. And he just, he told you he's going to do it. And you've been doing what you think you need to do and supposed to do and ought to do to see it come to pass. And it hasn't come to pass. Don't stop being faithful to God. Recognize that your obedience brings blessings. Amen. Amen. Recognize that God honors faithfulness. Amen. It is so. It doesn't matter who's not doing it. It doesn't matter what others say or think. And listen, the devil, the Bible says, is cunning. He's, he's crafty. He's subtle. He's deceptive, if you will. And what, if you are careful, he'll cause you to do or try to get you to do is try to get you to look off to the side and you see somebody else that's not doing what they're supposed to do and look like they're getting blessed. Look like things working all right for them. And they're not doing what the word say to do. You looked at the word and what they're doing doesn't line up. And it's like, wait a minute, does it even really matter? Mm -hmm. And you look to the other side, look at them and all of them. Amen. Amen. If you are careful, you'll start backpedaling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are careful, you'll start giving God less and less. Mm -hmm. You'll compromise your integrity at different mm -hmm. measures and different measures until there's no integrity in you at all. Amen. You and I have to recognize these deceitful plans. The Bible says, know the devil. Amen. Amen. Know him. In other words, recognize his tactics. Amen. Recognize his devices, his schemes, his tricks, his traps, if you will. Recognize them. Oh, glory. I, I hope you're receiving this today. Amen. My God, I, I, listen. I want, I want to encourage somebody, just be faithful. Just go on. You're right on the cusp of a change in your life. Amen. Amen. You, you, you're right there, my God. If you could see how close you were to your blessing manifesting, you wouldn't have any uh, 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 hesitation in your step. No, you put some pep in your step. Amen. Come on here. Amen. If you Amen. Could to work in your life and what he's taking you from and taking you to, amen, you'd be more fired up than ever before. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. My God, my God. Yes, yes, yes. This is not a time to slow down. This is not a time to give up. You said, oh, but you know, I really, I really get a lot out of when I go to church and, and we're able to connect. Right now, we go to church, we can't even hug each other, right? I mean, people go around hugging like this. What kind of hug is that? I don't feel that. Amen. Amen. Go around, you know, we bumping knuckles and kicking ankles or whatever. Hey Amen. That, that ain't what I'm used to. We can't even hardly talk to each other. You can't even tell if they smile because everybody got that little face thing on them. Amen. No, 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 no. This is real. Amen. This is real, pressure. People are struggling with this right now. They say, no, I need real church. And what they're really saying, and may not understand or know this is what they're saying, what they're saying is, I want what I used to have. Amen. I want those interactions. I want those experiences. But the Bible lets us know the church is on the inside of where the church, if you will. So if I want real church, then that means I want real fellowship with God. It doesn't matter if I can get in the house of everybody else or not. I've got to have real fellowship with my God. It is so. So when I understand, when I understand that, wait a minute, it's really about a personal relationship with him who came and laid down his life that I might be saved. 
Yes. That I might be free from sin. That I might be a candidate to abide with the Lord forever in eternity. Yes. When I understand that, then even if I can't get to the house, my God, my God, if the doors are closed and they haven't even made an announcement for when they're going to open them, I can still have precious fellowship with the Lord because any time you get into the word, you are getting into God. Amen. Oh, you don't believe? Okay, let me just cite John 1.1. 1, 1. St. John chapter, you don't have to go there. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. John 1 and 2. So then, if God, if in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, then you already know God is his word. Amen. So you need to spend time in the word, even if you don't come into the house. And I understand there's houses of worship right now. The doors are locked. They're not even announcing when they're going to open them. But let me tell you something. As I stated before, the devil is a deceiver, right? Amen. He's real cunning. Amen. Now, now I don't know how many of you thought about this, but but I think about stuff sometimes. The Lord brings stuff to my mind. Now, anybody been to Walmart uh, this week at all? Okay, okay, okay. Amen. Wagon. I'm talking about place in our area. For those of you who are viewing, perhaps you're in another state, another country, there are some places where, the places I call the places where people shop. They may buy food and clothing and detergent and other things there, gardening stuff and so forth, even get tires on their car. Uh, but, but people go there on a regular basis because these are facilities or uh, um, these are where merchants are that have a lot of different kind of products, all right? that you can even go there and get hot food. And right now, at Walmart, there's anywhere from 3,500 to over 10,000 people that go in a Walmart store every week. Okay? Just, just bear with me a little bit. If you break that down to a day just on the 3,500, that means there's at least 500 people that goes into a Walmart every day. All right? Now, of those people that go in, I dare say a number of them are positive for the COVID virus. A number of them. You touch the same cart they touch. You said, oh, but I always take the sanitizer. Now, I wipe them things off. I don't go touching them. But you touch the items, you open the freezer, you grab the products, but somebody touched them before you. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. You put your hand on the counter, you hit the keypads. Have y'all ever noticed that usually when you do the self-checkout, there's nobody doing the keypads but you? Yeah, yeah. There, nobody's coming and wiping them off between you and the last person. Amen. And a lot of them, I don't know, maybe it happens at some, but it doesn't happen at all. You are touching things other folk are touching. And folk walk up in Walmart feeling just as good, bold, and bad. And just go get what they get. They got their face piece on. And they don't clean the handle off their little shopping cart. But then they touch the cart in places other than the handle. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And we do that all right. We go to other shopping facilities and do that all right. But then when it comes to the church, and most churches have less than this. 50 people on a Sunday. Amen. The devil has fooled some to make them feel like the boogeyman is at church. Yes. Amen. 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 No, think about it. Amen. You say 3,500 to over 10,000 people go in a Walmart every day. I'm talking about a Walmart, one store. Mm -hmm. Every day. Or you talk about Wegmans or some of the other stores in the area. All right? Multiple people go in there with all kinds of diseases and germs. Amen. Had you thought about this? Amen. My God. Amen. Amen. A lot of the, first off, the money you handle is dirty. That's right. That's right. There's, now, now, I know y'all ain't gonna like this. <laughs> but it's the truth in it. 
There's traces of, on, of cocaine on basically every dollar you touch. Amen. <laughs> but that's the easy one. The tougher one to swallow is there fecal matter on it too. Amen. Okay, somebody know what fecal matter is. Amen. BM, mm -hmm. our movement. Mm -hmm. There's other names it could be called by. Yeah, on your money. So, so staying out of the house of prayer, to me, part of that is the plan of the enemy, too. Amen. Amen. Now, I do say, be wise. So we wear face coverings. It's not like we're impervious to everything. Hello, somebody. Amen. We wear our face coverings because, according to the researchers, this is a, a precautionary measure, primarily to keep us from sharing something with somebody else in terms of a particulate matter, mm -hmm. airborne particulate matter. So whether you're talking about through sneezing, coughing, talking, and or whatever else. And it also minimizes it from, from someone else, mm -hmm. all right? Because whatever you wear, it presents itself as some type of filter. Some are much better than others. My point simply is, there's folk that stay away from the church and think that's safe, but go into work, go into stores, go into every place Amen. else, go into Home Depot and Lowe's and all these other places like it's all right. Don't let the devil fool you. You want to come in the church, you come to the church. Amen. Amen. We, you come here, we're going to make sure you got a face covering on. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're going to make sure you sanitize out there. You can clean your hands. We don't know where they've been. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you come in here, we're going to check your temperature because you're a little bit too hot. Amen. You'll be too hot for here. We can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Then when you come in, unless you're in the family, you want the social distance. Amen. Why? Because we want you and others to be safe. Yes. That's what it's about. But, but recognize, recognize the season we're in. Recognize this time that we're in. This is a time, my God, I... I trust today that right now you are, and, and going in the days ahead, that you will be trying to think, God, what, what, what is different? What can I do now that we're in this pandemic? Amen. Do you know there are businesses that could start up and be multi-million, hundred million dollar businesses, even billion dollar businesses? Do you know that necessity is the mother of invention, as it were? When you can't do things like you used to do things, then you start to do things a different way. Right. This is how when a person who may used to write with their hands, but somehow they lose the ability to write, many of them have learned to write with their feet. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing today? But many folk uh, might have seen their way around wherever they were going and whatever they were doing, but they lost their sight. They learned to move and navigate by their hearing and by touch. Why? Because it requires and demands a change. Amen. Recognize the season you're in. Recognize that God has a plan for you. They may have closed the job down and now you're jobless, but your joblessness doesn't stop God from supplying your every need. Amen. Hello, hello, hello. Are you all receiving this word to your life? Is it making any sense to anybody? Amen. My God, the baby hollering out, amen. amen. Jesus. <laughs> are are, are y'all at Joshua 3? Okay, I'd ask you a little while to go to Joshua chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to read verse 9 and 10. I'm getting ready to close. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, hear the word of the Lord your God. Verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that you will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. God says, through Joshua, he says, Hereby, you're going to know. In other words, when God does this, you're going to know it's God. I believe that God is going to show you some stuff. Amen. There are some signs you're going to see that's going to make you know unequivocally and undeniably that it's God. 
Yes, you're not going to have to wonder, is it God? Is it time? Is it chance? No, no, no. You're going to know that it's God. In fact, I dare say God has already shown some of you there are some situations and instances that have happened in your life where undeniably you know it had to be God because there's no other logical explanation for how it is, why it is. It can only have been because of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Recognize, recognize, recognize. What are some of the things we need to recognize? Let me just go through a few of them. Well, you need to recognize change. Recognize time. Glory to God. There's a whole lot of folk that just don't recognize time. They just abuse time so bad. Yeah. Late for everything. I mean everything. They might... The one they might be glad about if they die late. I don't know. <laughs> Recognize talent. Sometimes you don't even know some of the talent that God put in you. I appeal to you today, explore. Try some stuff you've never tried. Recognize temptations. Recognize mistakes. Recognize value. Recognize first, flow. Form, fortitude, fakes, faces, falls, fouls, and finality. Recognize faith. Jesus. God wants us to maximize in this season, church. This is not the season to go and hide up under a rock. You still are supposed to live life. It is so. You're still supposed to live life. And you and I do well to recognize that God has an awesome plan for our lives. And the more we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, the more we endeavor to learn the voice of the Lord. In fact, I believe Isaiah said, learn to do good. We don't know to do it automatically. Automatically, we default to the, to the negative. We default to the bad stuff. Amen. I know y'all like that. Too many. Amen. Amen. That's, that's our default. Why? Because we're born in sin and shaped in the new. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. That his plan for our lives is good. Jeremiah tells us, Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, hey, I've got an awesome plan for you as it were. I know the plan that I have for you. Amen. To bring you to an expected end. I have a plan of peace for you. Glory to God. Right now, if your life has all kinds of stressors in it, God wants you to be at peace. You and I can live in that peace. The scripture says, as we keep our minds stayed on the Lord. So I encourage you today. I appeal to you today. Let's endeavor to recognize the voice of the Lord speaking to be sensitive to it. Here is, here is one indicator that can help you identify whether or not God is in you. If you peace in your spirit about it, that's big. Now you can go ahead and do anything you want to do because you know we're free like that. But the Holy Spirit will speak to us. And if there's no peace there, that's an indication that you probably need to rethink this or back off from that thing that you are headed towards. It is so. And so I, I encourage you today, go hard after God. Give him everything you got. Hallelujah. Listen, everybody have missed it somewhere. So the fact that you have missed it somewhere, don't let that stop you. You keep going. You don't give up. You don't give in. You look up, you rise up, and by God's grace, you go up. Amen. You all receiving this word. If so, just tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Amen. Just, just tell the Lord thank you. My God, recognize, recognize. It is so critical that we recognize the season we're in. This is a season of change. This is a season to go hard after God. Right now, the experts experts, some of the most knowledgeable people of our day, not only in this nation, but around the world, don't know what's next. 
right now they're trying to figure out how things are going and where things are going and they're making all kind of scales and models and they're rechanging things every so often it is going this way for a while next thing you know it kind of turns and goes the other way why because they don't know but i know somebody who knows Amen. my god knows it all and all you and i have to do is just follow his direction he can help us navigate because as it were the course is a dark course you can't see where to go except he directs your steps I can't see where to go, except he direct my steps. But he promised he would. Mm -hmm. The psalmist says it this way. Says thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Mm -hmm. In other words, your word gives light to where I'm to be stepping. And then he says your word is a light unto my path. Which is to say your word helps me know what direction to head in. So I can see how to step. So even if I have to step aside, because of your word, I know I'm still supposed to be going that way. I can go up there. If I have to step over here, I can still see I'm supposed to be headed that way. But because there was a, a trap here, there was a pit here, there was a stumbling block here, I can get around it because your word shows it to me. It is so. It is so. My God. Listen, the Lord love you today. There's no better thing than any of us can do than to embrace Jesus as our personal Savior. This is my conviction. Amen. I believe Jesus is Lord of all. He wants to be Lord of your life. He's not going to force his way in. You have to open up and let him in. The Bible says, if, if any man hear my voice, and I stand at the door and knock, if anyone hear my voice, he said he'll come in and sup with you. In other words, he'll fellowship with you. Intimate fellowship. And I'm glad today to know Jesus as my personal Savior. It doesn't matter what else is going on in life. Amen. He's still with me. Doesn't matter what storms I go through or you go through. He will still be with you. And so today, in this uh, sanctuary and in our hearing audience, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm inviting you to come. Even now, come. It's not a long, drawn-out process. The Bible says Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. And so right now, if that's you today, you can just put the word saved. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, but you want to know, just put the word saved. S-A-V-E. Just saved. Amen. Just write that right in for those of you in our streaming audience. Those of you in the house today, you're not saved, but you want to be saved. You can just lift your hand. Yes, would you include me in the prayer? I want to be saved. My God, my God. Yes, I see your hand there. Glory to God. Are there others today? You say, yes, I want to be saved. Would you include me in the prayer? My God, my God. Hallelujah. My next appeal is for those who have accepted Christ in their life. And through time and situations, now are not walking that thing out like they ought to. It's almost like your love has gotten cold concerning the Lord. It's cooled off a lot. Listen, this is a time when our love ought to burn hot for the Lord. This is a time when we ought to be going hard after God. And if that's you today, you say, yes, Bishop, would you include me in the prayer? I, I've fallen, but I, I, I want to get back up. I, I want to do better. I used to have a better walk with the Lord than what I have now. Would you include me in the prayer? If that's you today, you can lift your hand in the sanctuary. Yes, I see your hand there. Amen. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand there. Are there others? Yes, ma'am, I see your hand there. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Glory to God. Those of you in our viewing audience today, that could be you right now. Amen. Right where you are, you can just put the word pray. P-R-A-Y. Pray. Amen. That's an indication that you want to be included in this prayer. This prayer for reaffirming your walk with the Lord, rededicating your life to the Lord, realigning yourself with our great and awesome God. My God. Now, are there others today? And please understand, you can accept Christ as your personal Savior today. You can even be strengthened in your walk with the Lord. And if you have a church home somewhere, you can go to your church home with the assurance you've got your business fixed with God and just do a great work for God right now. Amen.
You see, this is really about kingdom work for me. I'm not trying to get everybody in Ark of Jesus. I want everybody in God's kingdom. Amen. Those that God has for Ark of Jesus, I'm not worried. You come. Bible tells me God sets them in the church as it pleases me. So I'm not worried about that part. I'm, I'm more concerned with folk making it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. This appeal that I'm making now, this one is for membership. This one is where one says, I want to be a member of Ark of Jesus Ministry. Now let me tell you, I want to be your pastor. I believe that God will use me instrumentally, strategically, and pivotally in your life to help you walk out your God-given purpose. I believe that God will use this ministry to help you grow in your faith. If that's you today, you say, yes, that's me. Bishop, would you include me in the prayer? I want to be a member of Ark of Jesus Ministries. If that's you, even in this sanctuary, you can lift your hand right where you are in our streaming audience. Just put VM. I want to be a virtual member. Would you include me in the prayer right now? Let's go ahead. Put VM for virtual member. Hallelujah to God. Yes, yes, yes. You are precious to God, each and every one of you. Every last one, you are precious to God. And God's best is before you. And I appeal to you today, go after God's best. Walk in God's best. And please understand, I'm not talking about going after God and consider his best like the big house on the hill and the yacht and all of that. God's best is having Jesus on the inside. That's his best. You can't do better than that. Having peace in your life. There's folk that got all the... Uh, um, Things that material, uh, uh, that money can buy and material that could be attained, there are people that have it. And some of them are in turmoil and torment because there is no peace. You can't buy peace with money. You can buy things with money, but not peace. And God says, Jeremiah 26, 3, Bible says he will keep us, and I'm paraphrasing it, Say he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because we trust him. Amen. Amen. King James Version said, Thou will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because we trust him. Amen. And so God can give you that peace. Some of you right now, that's the one thing you're missing in your life. You got all the other stuff, but you're missing the peace. The Lord wants to give you peace. Now, would you pray with me at this time? In the sanctuary and in our Streaming audience, if you would, would you bow with me now in prayer? Father, thank you so very much that you would love us enough as to send us your word today and then illuminate truths of your word at the level of our understanding. Thank you, God, that today your word has fallen on good ground, fertile ground in hearts to receive your word. And I believe right now that your word is germinating and producing good, abundant, acceptable, and remaining fruit to the glory of your great name. I thank you for those, O oh God, who desire to know Jesus as their personal Savior. I thank you for those who desire, God, to reaffirm their relationship with you today. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for those today who say they want to be a member of Ark of Jesus Ministry. And I cover each and every one of them now that they may know the reality of the things they indicated in Jesus' mighty name. Now I'm asking everyone to repeat after me right where you are, at home, right in this sanctuary. Would you repeat after me now? Heavenly Father, I ask you now to forgive me of all of my sin. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus, from all unrighteousness. Come into my life, and I will be yours from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Come on, let's bless the Lord. My God is. If you pray that little short prayer with us today, and, and the Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. Today has been a day of transformation in your life. And I just want to encourage you to continue to look up and go forward. Listen, if you're not in this area where you can.
come to Ark of Jesus, you need to go to some church somewhere. Amen. There should be somebody, there is somebody in your area where uh, you can be nurtured and nourished through in the Word. Also, tune in with us on next Sunday. We expect to be here and the Word of the Lord coming forth. Now, you can email us at for those of you that have something to write on and write with, let me give you an email address where you can email us right here at the church. That's info, I-N-F-O, at ARK, A-R-K of Jesus Ministries, fully spelled out. So that's A-R-K-O-F-J-E-S-U-S-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S dot -E -E com. You can also call us if those of you which uh, may not be doing email, you can call us at 585-262-6420. I want you to let us know if you've received Christ in your life today, reach out to us. Give us a call, 585-262-6420, or email us at info at Ark of Jesus Ministries, or you can go to the website, and right there you can leave a comment in uh, from the website, arkofjesusministries.com. Did you get blessed today? Yeah. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. <laughs> this, as I shared, this is real church. This is real church. And at this time, we're going to have our offering. Um, when it comes to our offering, you can sow into this ministry. Uh, generally, we have something to come up on the screen. It will not come up on today. The cash app address for Ark of Jesus Ministries is dollar sign A-R-K-O-F-J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's Ark of Jesus, dollar sign Ark, A-R-K of Jesus. And you can, so listen, um, some might think, hey, I, 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 all I have is this. There is no amount too small because every penny counts. It's more your heart, amen. We wanna encourage you to join in this ministry. This uh, ministry God is using to touch not only here in Rochester or in New York State, but around the world. You can be a part of that and help make it happen. Amen. We here, we tithe and give sacrificially and so forth, and we encourage you to be a part of it. So uh, at this time, you can feel free to give, and we're going to be signing off. Please do reach out to us. Amen. Uncle G, let's bless God for our streaming audience as they're signing off. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.